The typical AP Lang student often struggles with generating evidence in response to the argument prompt. But why is this? Well, for the most part, it's because you're all teenagers and you may not think you have much life experience that can relate to any prompt that you're given. So what are you gonna do when you're taking your exam and you run into some trouble because you need to find evidence for the prompt that's given to you? Just give up? No way! You're going to let me show you some quick and easy tips right now that will help you pick the perfect evidence to support your reasoning when it comes to answering your argument prompt on test day. <gasps> Look, though some of you may not believe it, you, yes, you, all have plenty of unique experiences that will fit into whatever prompt is given to you. The prompts are purposely built to be widely accessible from diverse angles. Now, you may be thinking that I should hold the phone because this isn't a topic sentence video, it's an evidence video, and I haven't even given you topic sentence tips yet. But fear not, because today, I'm going to quickly show you how you want to order your thoughts so that you can pick your evidence and begin to generally construct your topic sentence. And then we'll cover topic sentences in our next video. As we get into this video, I do want to give a quick shout out to Ms. Helton and the Franklin Simpson High Wildcats. To Ms. Helton students, please consider yourself blessed to have someone as awesome at the helm of your class. And when you own your AP exams this spring, make sure that you tell me how you did in the comments below this video. Now, back to the show. So when you're writing an argument and you begin picking your examples for your body paragraphs, you want to make sure that you follow the direction of your thesis. Before I show you the thesis we're going to be working with, I want to remind you of the prompt that we're responding to. It comes from the AMSCO Lang and Comp textbook and it can be seen right here on your screen. And the thesis we're gonna rely on to provide us with the direction that we need is actually going to show up right here. Although many individuals can find just about any situation offensive and it's incredibly unrealistic to apply warning labels to everything, placing cautionary labels and ratings on commonly agreed upon troubling content is appropriate. Based on the thesis I just showed, I have to make a few moves in my argument. The first move I have to make is to concede that anyone can find just about anything offensive. And I have to concede that it's incredibly unrealistic to apply warning labels to everything. I actually I actually think that I can prove both of those things in one paragraph as long as I use the right examples. Then I need to produce another part of my essay that argues that there is content out there that people can commonly agree upon as being troubling. And I need to then explain how labeling such things is appropriate. And I actually think I can prove both of these elements in one to two paragraphs. Of course, that is if I pick the right examples. So let me show you how to do that. The first thing you want to do when picking an example is to figure out what experience that you have that will fit with what you're trying to prove. The easiest way to do this is by remembering one letter, and that's the letter S. Yes, rather than remembering a bunch of other acronyms, if you just remember the letter S and you cube it, then you'll be able to start your thought processes that will help you mine your background knowledge so you can select the best proof that will support your line of reasoning for your essay. So what does S cubed actually mean? Well, the first S stands for subjects. Yes, think about all of the subjects that you take in school. English, history, math, science, technology. Most of the time, your strongest examples will come from what you know in these subject areas. So take a few moments and mull over if anything comes to mind that can help prove your case based on your thesis for whatever prompt you're responding to. Let me do that right now. Can I think of an example that I learned from any of my school subjects that prove that anyone can find just about anything offensive? Not off the top of my head. So I'm going to actually jump to the next S, which stands for society. When you consider elements of society to draw examples from, you want to consider things that you've learned from mass media, news sources, entertainment, sports, literature, art, or religion. Now, can I think of examples from the news that could help me prove that anyone can find just about anything offensive? Heck yes, I can. And I'm going to reveal what that will be in just a minute. But can I also think of examples from the society category that can help me prove that people can commonly agree upon troublesome content and when to label it? Yes, again. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to fill in a quick organizer like the one that you're about to see. When I do, I'm going to just check the boxes about what categories I'm going to pull from. Then I'm going to, in a general sense, label what my examples actually are. I don't want to get to specifics right now because that would take way too much time. I'm just trying to plan out my essay right here. 
so this needs to be quick. And if I keep things general, it will help me when I generate delicious topic sentences for each of my body paragraphs. So check out what I'm gonna do. I'm going to check the society box, check the mass media box, and then I'm going to generally label my first example as recent controversies surrounding the changing of the year end holiday titles and materials. What you can know is that when I put an example in my body paragraph, I'll be specifically describing some recent changes that have been made to year end holiday titles and materials. But I'll get specific when I start actually writing the paragraphs. Right now, once again, we're just planning. Since I'm going to be pulling my example to prove that people can commonly agree upon some troubling content from the society section as well, I'd check the society box again, click mass media again, and then I'd label my example somewhat specifically as common media ratings. And there you have it. I'm going to use media ratings to prove the second leg of my argument as to how warning labels can be appropriate, especially because there are things that people agree upon when it comes to, well, the media ratings. If you want to practice with organizers like this, you can find blank ones linked right in the description below this video, right by where you can find things like like the like button for this video or the subscribe button for this channel, the super thanks button if you really appreciate this video's advice, and the channel membership button for those of you looking to potentially support the Garden of English and its content creation for less than one coffee a month. Now, you may have noticed that I haven't got to the third S yet, and that's okay because I'm going to right now. As you search for examples, you may also feel free to pull from the self. That's what this third S stands for. Yes, you can readily use examples from your own personal experience. You can also readily use examples from the lives of your family, friends, or acquaintances. Or you can even generate hypothetical examples to support your argument. But I do want to give you a warning about this last category. The weakest examples for arguments often come from this one, especially if you're constructing hypothetical examples, which are just examples that aren't actually real, but could possibly be real. If your argument relies on hypotheticals, it can become quickly full of fallacies, which are areas where your reasoning is exceptionally vulnerable and weak. The easiest way to challenge an argument that's built on hypothetical examples is merely to ask this question. What if that example or those examples didn't happen? What? Because they're not concrete enough to say that they did, we can just ask if they didn't. Boom! The argument's dead. Crumbles like a stack of cards. So, when you're selecting evidence to support your thesis, just remember S cubed. Also remember the order of importance and validity of evidence. Subjects, society, self. Once you consider some examples, make sure that you generally note those examples that you're going to choose because it's going to help you generate your topic sentences, like I mentioned earlier. Remembering one letter three times is pretty easy, and so is generally noting your evidence. But you still need to practice before your exam. And you need to learn how to generate topic sentences that will help you create a strong line of reasoning for your argument. And it just so happens that if you want to learn how to do that, all you need to do is click on the video that's about to show up right here. Ugh, not fall, they take them in the spring. Take them in the spring. It comes from the Ampo, ugh, mm, nope. Reread, checks, I'm not eating cereal here. Ridiculous.